Welcome to the APSA Art Hotspot. I'm Dr. Paul Bayliss, APSA's Art and Museum Curator. And today we are in discussions with Jakub van Skolkwerk, our 2013 APSA Latelier Merit Award winner. For most of you that are not familiar or, or not familiar with um, Jakub van, Skol van Skolkwerk's artwork, he's what we would refer to as a photorealist in terms of the technique that he brings through, um, through his artworks. Our discussions today are going to focus a bit around um, Jakub's artworks, the journey that he's taken since um, winning the Absolute Atelier Merit Award, and also what it's like now currently producing work as an artist and working as an artist under COVID-19. Jakub, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Paul. Thank you very much. Maybe just tell us a bit about where, where, um, where you are at. Um, I can see a few artworks in the background in there. Yes, I'm currently sitting in my studio um, in Randburg. Um, so I'm busy working. Um, and yeah, this is my studio in the background. Um, it's, a, it's not far from where I live, about three kilometers. So uh, my, my next favorite place to my own. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Um, Jakub, I mean, I introduced you as, a, as an artist that uses photorealist technique. Um, maybe if you can just unpack that for us in terms of for the viewer, what, how, you, you know, how one would define yourself. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question, Paul. Um, I think um, I wouldn't necessarily describe myself as a photorealist. Um, since that is very much like Chuck Close, a very famous example of that, um, very, uh, very, very detailed. I would rather say I'm a realist in the sense that I create a realistic or a figurative artwork, but I use quite an impressionist technique to get to that or an expressive way of getting to the realism. And I also, uh, in all my artwork, also in my installations, I always try to push the boundaries of realism. So from creating the illusion on a two-dimensional uh, surface, I'd like to sometimes venture into, into the three-dimensional uh, sphere as well. That's why I say also installation. And, and when you're producing your work, I mean, you're working off images that you've brought together. Is it a number of images? Is it one image? I mean, maybe just give give the viewer a sense in terms of how you, you know, what leads to getting to that final image that we then see on the canvas? Um, yes, um, I, I do take a lot of photographs um, on my travels, on my residencies um, of everyday life, people and places, everything surrounding me. Um, I collect all of these images on my cell phone. Um, I take mostly, of, mostly all my photographs these days on my cell phone. And uh, eventually I print some of these photographs. And these photographs, you, you would see there are mountains of photographs in my studio <laughs> lying around. Um, and they eventually become, um, you know, I, I would say these photographs are uh, in conversation with each other. So you will see in many of my exhibitions, eventually, um, I create the artworks also so that they are juxtaposed with sometimes physical or found objects, um, but also paintings in um, juxtaposed to create a narrative. So the story, uh, the, the, the photographs is the, um, is the first process in my artwork, always my own photographs that I take wherever I go. Um, and they, they serve then eventually as inspiration or as a, a group of photographs serve as inspiration for the exhibitions that I create. I mean, the one thing maybe the viewer might be asking then and something I'm particularly interested in is then, because you keep mentioning taking a number of photographs, your inspiration and that. So, you know, in terms of that, what is your inspiration? What, you know, guides you or or drives you to, to cert, certain imagery, certain photographs. Um, because when we look at your work as well, it's fairly diverse in the sense that it's, um, you've done exhibitions where the work has been just 
purely landscapes. You've done others where you've brought in um, people and that. And if I recall, one of your one of your exhibitions as well, you focused on um, traditional African cattle, if I'm correct. Yes, I mean I had a long journey as an artist um, already. Um, this is my, I think, my 17th or 18th year that I'm uh, producing uh, as a South African artist. So, um, yes, I think for me, there's always the challenge in uh, uh, being able to paint everything. For me, that is, I, I, I wanted, since I started being, becoming a painter, I wanted to be able to, to paint people, animals, uh, landscapes, the life, everything. So it's been a journey of stages or, or a period in my career, one can say, where I focus more on people or I would focus more on animals um, or eventually at the moment, I'm focusing more on landscape than anything. But I think it also happens quite naturally, the flow from one genre to another. Um, and also, the the addition of three-dimensional installation also came later in my career, where I, where at first I was just painter, traditional. Um, I've incorporated more and more uh, three-dimensional or sculptural elements, eventually leading to, to installation when it comes to my solo exhibitions, but um, also including new media into my uh, exhibitions to, 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 again, come back to that point where I try and push the boundaries of, of realism and in the end, it's about communication to bring over my idea or my theme. Um, I would basically incorporate almost anything I can lay my hands on to, to bring over my message. So um, I did not really, I wouldn't want to put myself in a box and say I'm doing specifically just landscape now. If, if the right opportunity or inspiration leads me, it could become anything else. And the, the, the sort of media, media you work with in terms of the paint? Um, yes, so I'm working with oil paint and I uh, work on Belgian linen, which I really find a fantastic surface to work on. Um, also sometimes on a paper, oil, oil paint that you specifically make for oil painting. Uh, it has a total different kind of uh, texture, it's the, the whole experience is different to work from canvas to paper, but I like it for both. And you have done some experimenting also on board at one time? Yes, I have. Um, that I also enjoy. As long as the surface is quite uh, smooth, um, I really enjoy, uh, you know, that kind of surface to work on. But also um, in some recent exhibitions, I've painted on objects, you know, found objects, um, creating total different uh, you know, imagery when it comes to realism well, by painting it on a three-dimensional object or combining the object with a painting. So that, that I also enjoy, you know, to transform something already existing and, uh, you know, to bring it into a new context. I love the, the magic that happens with that. And, I, you know, I mean, for me having, and I've known you, I've been honoured to know you for a number of years, and I think, you know, as a curator, it's always, one's almost always humbled when one sees how, as an artist, your work has evolved and progressed, you know, over, and where you, as well, at the same time, find your inspiration and grow through through the different experiences that you that you have as an artist. I mean, since um, winning the 2013 Merit Award in the Absolutalia, I mean, maybe just share a uh, bit with us the journey that you've now been take, um, or you've taken since then. Yes, I must say, um, firstly, thank you to Absa for that award. It was really a very, very valuable addition to my, to my career. Um, I mean, it, it was not only did I become part of the, I would call it the APSA family, which I think was, was for me a wonderful network to become part of, um, to, be, to be connected to other artists, um, more mature artists, also people in the industry. One is made part of this after, after winning an award like that. As an artist, it's very much, and I mean, you're right there in that 
it's very much based on your experiences that influence your work and that. And I mean, traveling or traveling the globe, meeting different people, meeting different cultures. I mean, that must have played a huge role um, in terms of both growing you as an individual, but bringing that into your um, your chosen medium. Yes, definitely. Um, I must say, I, I, I feel very lucky that I has, I've won the, the Zilp Merit Award in 2013. Um, that also, apart from the APSA network, also introduced me to the Zilp Foundation network uh, with the uh, director uh, Indra Busal, uh, who is from Germany, but also has her foundation here in South Africa. And that opened the possibility for me. I actually became friends with Indra from, from winning that award onwards. And um, she has since invited me on many projects to, to be part participating in many projects. I, I love the, the idea of collaboration. And I think my, my work has been steered towards collaborating more and more with different artists from different disciplines, different countries. And that makes it just so much more uh, inclusive and uh, uh, connective. I think that, that idea of con the collective uh, consciousness has become a very strong part of my of my work since I've been involved with APSA and the Zilp Foundation. I think the important thing is, you know, you mentioned collaborations and partnerships and. Um, You've had a, you know, when we've looked at your journey that you've had with um, Indra through the Zilt Foundation. But one of your other major partners that's played such an important role in your career has been your partnership with the Barnard Gallery in Cape Town. Yes, that's correct. I, I have to say um, it's now this year, 10 years that I've been represented by the Barnard Gallery. So it's, uh, um, it's great to reflect back on that as well. Um, a wonderful uh, period in my career and my life so far is uh, to be, to, to have been associated with them, especially the, di the, the director, owner, Christian Barnard, and uh, people like Alistair Barnard, who is the, the creative director. Um, they are amazing, an amazing gallery to work with. Um, I always say I collaborate, with, especially when it comes to art fairs um, and exhibitions, because we, we really look at the gallery, the space, the, also even if it is an art fair, the booth, uh, we design the artwork, artworks that I create to fit with the architecture of the booth or the gallery. So it's, it also always involves many discussions and, um, in, you know, introspection and also, um, yeah, wonderful insight that they have uh, from a curatorial perspective and they want to build the artist's career first, firstly and that I really respect them for and I'm very, very glad for that. So and for, any young, for, for any young artist trying to break out into the industry and in that, I mean, what advice would you then give them to say in terms of how do you work with a gallery? How do you build that relationship up? I mean, what are the, the nuggets of, um, or the gems that you would share with, the, with young artists trying to break into that industry? I think the most important thing for young artists these days is to, to, uh, to uh, partake in um, competitions like the Absala Atelier. There's a few comments that, that, that is, I think is a wonderful platform to be noticed. But I think the, the first thing is show your work, you know, don't be scared to show your work. Um, show what you do on social media, uh, show your world. I think people are interested to see behind the scenes. Uh, how, how do you live? I mean, you don't have to do a reality show for that matter, but uh, just be real and, and show people your methods, uh, the way that your, your creative process works. Um, be interesting. I think that's the most important thing. If you're interesting and if you're good, if you're talented, you have good technique. Technique is still important. I mean, concept is is also just as important. But if you have a good technique, you know, for it and show your work somewhere along the line, someone will see your work and and will approach you. Uh, there's always in the most unexpected way. 
but there's people around there that are looking for for new talent. Um, so, but if you're not visible, how will they see you? So that's that's my advice: be visible, especially now at the moment where uh, people are in lockdown and it's more difficult to to show your work. I, um, it, there's nothing wrong with with it to 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 create a portfolio of what you've created, uh, write a few texts or get critics to write texts about your work and uh, approach galleries or foundations with your work and, and um, you know, do propose. I think it's, it's, it's hard work to, to make it in this industry uh, with, I think, for any, any artist, whether it's a musician, a, a, an actor, whatever, it's, it's hard to make it, and especially now, um, since lockdown, and we don't, we have a lot of uncertainty. We don't know how the world will change after this, and um, if things will, will get back to kind of normal. Um, I think we, we have to, to, to be open to the fact that, that, there, that there will be many changes and that a lot of art will have to shift to virtual exhibitions or uh, anything that happens online. So one has to think creatively. Does it affect, though, your, your end product? I mean, do you find yourself adjusting your work, adapting it, knowing that it might now be viewed only online? Um, or do you still maintain that sort of traditional approach that you have been doing? I think that nothing has really changed much to, my, to, to how I approach it or continue the same way. I think it's just the thing that I really miss is the interaction um, at exhibitions or art fairs, um, you know, to meet people and to socialize. I think it's also a very important uh, part of being an artist or the art world for that matter, you know. Uh, I, I mean, you also have been to art fairs and exhibitions. Um, it's it's an interesting uh, space to find yourself in you know, or to... to um, to, to visit, you know, because you, you you feed from the energy of the people and from other artists' opinions and ideas, and um, I miss that. I must say, I get a lot of energy from people, and a lot of my inspiration comes from people, and especially the other artists. So um, that that is a, quite a lot at the moment. I um, I'm very much, you know almost feel a bit captured in my own mm. in my own mind, in my own space, my own studio. Uh, whereas I like to socialize. Luckily for things like social media, that one can still be connected in some way, but I miss the physicality of, of the art world, I, I must say. The present advantage of where it is, where it is now is you are potentially able to reach a far broader audience than what you were able to do when you had a physical exhibitions within a brick and mortar space. Now you can, you know, cross cultures, cross geographical boundaries, sharing your work with, with a whole new array of, of individuals and art lovers. Um, I think you are right. I think uh, people will be more um, open to the idea of virtual exhibitions than ever before. Uh, since that, that will be the only platform or one of the only platforms that one can view art. And I think this lockdown or lockdowns all over the world has proven that we need art as a means. You know, if it wasn't for art, we would really struggle to get a lockdown. So um, I think this could be a wonderful way to unify the world as such, um, where an exhibition becomes not bound to a certain geographical uh, area, but becomes global. Um, you know, if you if you show an exhibition online, immediately it becomes global. Um, yeah, that is that is actually a wonderful opportunity, and I think uh, this new way of life will uh, introduce many new opportunities. And artists should be actually in the forefront of that, since we are the creators of society. And if we work together, we could come up with new solutions and. Um, create, you know, creative new new ways to to um, to what the art will become. I think that's so important to any young artist watching this at the moment um, is to use that opportunity that technology um, has and um, 
apply it and also through social media to get your get your works out there. One of the interesting things that um, I found over the past two, two, three months while we've been under lockdown and I'm building up to it is that many artists that I wasn't aware of, many unknown artists, if I can um, use that term politely, have taken their works, put it out onto social media and suddenly you, you, you start seeing a whole new um, family, community of artists out there that I would, as a curator, never have been aware of. So to, I think that's, yuck, that, as a closing point, I think that's so important is to, the, to those artists, use the opportunity, keep producing and get your work out there. So to Yaku, thank you very much for joining us um, today and for availing yourself. I know you are, have been pretty busy in your studio and we're going to allow you to go back to continue painting and we look forward to seeing um, what next you're going to be doing. Thank you very much for joining us today at the APSA Art Hotspot.